A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. So usually if I ask people if they can give me a value, especially students, kind of an approximate value for square root, given square root, for example square root of 23, they struggle a lot with that. I mean, some students get the idea of, well, square root of 23 is kind of close to 5, a bit less than 5, but bigger than 4, but can never really give a kind of approximate value for the decimal expansion. And today I would like to present to you a very simple trick that pure mathematics professors hate for you to approximate square roots to up to two decimal places. I would say it really depends on how big you want to calculate the square root in your head, but it's going to give you a very nice approximate value which comes really close to the actual value which is pretty good if you ask me and also at the end I'm going to explain to you why the method works the way it does work but before we dive into the main video I would like to give a huge shout out to the YouTube channel Geekly at you who asked me if I could shout out their YouTube channel here on mine because they produce very high quality STEM content that you should look into and if this is something that you would like to see more then definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel my friends over on Geekly Edu create short explainer videos in all topics STEM. Be it if you take a look at their playlists, mathematics, statistics, biology, physics, chemistry and economics. Whatever you can think of in the STEM category will be covered over on their channel at some point. And even better, these guys post videos nearly every day, just like my old uploading schedule. So there is new content all the time to keep you learning. So yeah, definitely make sure to subscribe to my boys and girls over on Geekly at you and now we are going to dive right in. So let us take a look at the square root of 23, the one that I talked about at the very beginning. Square root of 23. So my Hagoromo child seems to be kind of wet. <laughs> is it just me or is this Hagoromo child looking kind of fake? <laughs> my boy Danny, you're, you're definitely not watching, but if you were watching, then this would go out to you. So square root of 23. How would you approximate something like this? As mentioned before, it's, it's kind of low to five and bigger than four. It's kind of bounded in between. The reason for that is that we have two perfect squares in the near vicinity of square root of 23. Namely, we got the square root of 25, which is going to give us 5 as an upper bound, and the square root of 16, which is going to give us 4 as the lower bound. It's somewhere in that vicinity and it's closer to 5 than it is to 4. And we can actually do better than that with this trick that I'm going to show to you now. As mentioned before, it's kind of close to a perfect square. The next perfect square would either be 25 or if you want to do addition, it's going to be 16. Namely, 23 is nothing other than we got the square root of 16 plus and to 23, 7 is still missing. Okay, 16 plus 7. Now what you are going to do for this trick to work is you are going to take your perfect square that you got here and you are going to take the square square root of that. Namely square root of 16 is going to give you 4. Then what you are going to do is you are going to add the remainder which is still here which we didn't take the square root of yet namely 7 you are going to add it to it and divide the 7 by what we got here at the front so the square root of our perfect square but you are going to double it so namely 2 times 4 is going to give us 8. And this right here is our approximation for the square root of 23. Namely, what we got right here is, okay, we got 4 dot something, 4 dot. What you're going to get here is certainly most of the time, or I should rather say always, a fraction which is going to be less than 1 in, in some way. So it's going to be a decimal part in some way. Now 7 over 8, what, it does, what is that? Uh, 1 8 is going to give you 0 dot 1 to 5, meaning this time 7 is going to be uh, um, 0 dot um, 8 7 5. This should be what you get. And this right here is the approximation for the square root of 23. And this right here is the actual value. Isn't that kind of good? I mean, we are pretty close and there's even a better way to get to a more precise value than that. But we are going to discuss this at the very end. It, it has to do with the same approximation method that we did here, just using the upper bound. Okay, but for now, we are going to take a look at another example to give you a bit more practice in this uh, little method. Namely, um, let me think of one, um, I don't know, square root of, let's go into the hundreds, uh, 118. 
Okay, so what we got here, square root of 118. What is the nearest perfect square to it where we still have to add something to it such that we get 118? Well, this would be 100. Square root of 100 is going to give us 10. Now we got the square root of 100 plus 18. At some point, you don't need to think about this anymore. It's just something that you have in your head because you have a lot of square roots or perfect squares in your head. And yeah, how to bound your number is going to be something that is just a matter of practice. Now, square root of 100 is going to give us 10. Put it to the front, 10 plus. Now you're going to put your remainder on top of the fraction and then you're going to divide the whole thing by what you got right here, square root of the perfect square, two times, so 20. Okay, this right here is our approximation. In other words, this is going to give us 10 plus, and if we cancel out the twos in the numerator and denominator here respectively, we are going to get nine over 10. Nine over 10, I mean, this is kind of easy. This right here is really easy. It's 0.9, giving us 10.9. And this right here is the actual value of our square root. This is really close. This is not too shabby, am I right? And yeah, this right here is always going to work. Just one remark. The bigger numbers you get, the bigger our error is going to get. Meaning, the bigger your remainder is away from the number one, the bigger our error gets. This just has to do with the so-called Taylor series expansion of the square root. The Taylor series expansion is going to give you a, a precise approximation, a very, very precise approximation, you could say, of some kind of function with respect to an infinite series being described as a polynomial. What I mean by that is that if we have some kind of f of x, we can, if it's analytical, for example, we can express it as a so-called formal power series expansion as being c0 plus c1 times x to the first power plus c2 times x squared plus dot dot dot. And methods to finding such power series expansions would be, for example, Taylor series expansions or Maclaurin series expansions. And this is what we are going to take a look at. And you can find out these coefficients by differentiating your function and basically just solving an initial value problem, you could say, at some point, for example, x being equal to zero. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at the so-called linear approximation of our square root. The linear approximation is just our Taylor series expansion being cut off after the first term, such that you get a linear approximation. And you might notice this right here is also basically linear. What we got is some c0 right here. This is our um, basically integer part that we got plus some kind of fractional part which is going to be ex expressed by the first coefficient times some x to the first power. Now how are we going to get our coefficients? In normal case a Taylor series expansion can be expressed like this or we should go with a Maclaurin series expansion. It really doesn't matter. If we go with the Maclaurin series expansion you can also find dedicated links to the videos down there in the description as being the infinite series where k starts from zero and goes up to infinity of the kth derivative of our function evaluated at zero divided by k factorial times x to the kth power. This right here is the so-called Maclaurin series expansion and we are going to cut it off after the first term. Now what do we need for us to find out what linear approximation is going to be for the square root that is given up here? All that we need is basically the kth derivative evaluated at zero of our function. What is our function exactly? If we take a look at our function, it's either the square root that we got here, so the square root of x you could say, or if we go into more detail such that we can plug in numbers a bit better, what you can also say is that, that we take a look at the function square root of x plus some delta x. This is just some shift in the function for example. So let us say that our function f of x is going to be the square root of x plus some kind of delta x. Okay, this is something that we can do. It's a perfect square plus some kind of error. Okay, it's, it's a bit shifted away from the perfect square. Now, we can express the square root also in terms of exponents. This is going to make our differentiation a bit easier. Maybe this is the square, uh, this is um, parentheses x plus delta x to the one half power. And now what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this once because if we differentiate it once we're going to land at our linear approximation. Now differentiating our function. What are we going to get? I mean just using the exponent rule right here, power rule, we're going to track the one half to the front. Oh one half, see we're going to double what we got right here as the square root of our perfect square times. And now we're going to get x plus delta x to the negative one half power because we're going to reduce our exponent by one times the inner derivative but 
Since we differentiate with respect to x, delta x is going to vanish as a constant and x is going to turn into 1. And this is good. Now all that's really left to do is to evaluate our derivatives for the linear approximation to work at 0. And then we are basically done. Plugging 0 into our x is going to get us. So f of 0 is going to be, plugging 0 into here is going to give us delta x to the 1 half power, meaning that's the square root of delta x. Now, what about f prime of 0? This is going to give us, okay, 1 half is going to be preserved. And also we are going to get 0 into here, delta x to the negative 1 half power. This is 1 over square root of delta x, meaning 1 over 2 times square root of delta x. Meaning overall, our square root that, that we got right here, that we want to approximate, so our square root of x plus delta x, can be approximated by linear approximation. Namely, this right here is going to be our first term. So square root of delta x is going to be the zero derivative evaluated at zero divided by zero factorial, which is going to give us one times x to the zero of power, which is going to give us just one. Okay, so we are going to get our c naught out on the other side and the c naught is going to be nothing other than the square root of delta x. Then what we are going to do, we are going to add the first term to it. Now the first derivative evaluated at 0 is going to give us 1 over 2 times square root of delta x divided by 1 factorial, 1 factorial is 1, times x to the first power, which is just going to be x. And et voila, we are done. x divided by 2 times the square root of delta x. And now I hope you can see where the approximation comes from. If we now say that our delta x is going to be the nearest perfect square, then the square root of the nearest perfect square is going to turn into just a number in and of itself. So square root of 16 that we got right here is going to turn into four. Then our x is going to be the shift that we basically got in our function. For example, on 23, it's going to be seven divided by two times our square root of the perfect square. In our case before, this is going to give us eight. Pretty neat, right? And now here comes the part where, where I said that you are going to get a better approximation if you go at it from the other side, because the approximation is going to be better the, the uh, absolute value of x. I'm, I'm terribly sorry I identified this uh, delta x as being um, our shift, but it's kind of confusing here. Our delta x is the nearest perfect square. So yeah, this is a thing. So if we take a look at a square root of 23, a square root of 23, it's also the same as the square root of 25 minus 2. Now our negative 2 is going to be our new x. And definitely the absolute value of negative 2 is going to be closer to 1 than the absolute value of 7, which is 7. Meaning this approximation right here is actually going to be better. This just stems from the fact that the radius of convergence for the infinite series, the Taylor series e expansion for what we got right here, is going to be um, 1. Oh, okay, so the, the absolute value of x, so our shift, uh, must be less or equal to 1 for this approximation to work nicely, if I rem remember correctly. And now you can plug in the negative 2 into here, meaning the square root of 25 is going to give us 5 minus 2 divided by, and then um, 5 times 2 is going to give us 10. This right here is 1 fifth, meaning a better approximation would be 4.8. Okay, if you take a look at the actual value once again, this right here is going to give us a better approximation for the square root of 23. And you can do so for square root of 118 too, namely the square root of 118, which perfect square is even closer than 100 to 118. I mean, this is going to be the square root of 121 minus 3. Okay, and you see that the absolute value of negative 3 is definitely closer to 1 than the absolute value of 18. A big step closer if you ask me. Now, if we take a look at that, square root of 121 is going to give us 11 minus 3 divided by 22. And I have no idea what 3 divided by 22 is right now. It's something like 0.1 something. 0.1, yeah, so um, it's definitely less than uh, 10.9, a little bit less, okay, than that. Yeah, so this is going to be a better approximation overall. And this already concludes today's video. And if you did like what you saw today, then definitely also make sure to subscribe to Geekly Edu. They are going to provide you with similar STEM content on their channel too. And other than that, don't forget to check out STEM Merch EU2 for handcrafted items. Um, and other than that, I wish you guys a flammable day and please stay safe. Ciao. It's very, very
very warm in here and it's stealing my breath away. I hate summer. <laughs> See ya.